This is a video that I've been excited to make for a long time. Thunderbolt has finally arrived, fully supported, pretty much fully operational on AM4. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been a big proponent of Thunderbolt. It's a genuinely pretty good interface standard, and it's been criminal. It's locked up on, you know, basically one platform. You want to implement Thunderbolt on Power 9, your SOL, or in this case, AM4. Now you guys might remember the, uh, the mod that I did for the Alpine Ridge Thunderbolt controller. Yeah, you could use this on the uh, Gigabyte Designator motherboard with Threadripper X399. And it was a little sketchy and a little unsupported. Hot plug was not a thing. But I'm here. I'm happy to report that both the ASRock Creator X570 and the Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 3, not only do they support Thunderbolt, they've got Thunderbolt support out of the box. And hot plug, not an issue. So I've reviewed both of these boards separately. The X570 Creator has a dual Thunderbolt solution with 10 gigabit ethernet. The Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 3 so this has a single Thunderbolt port, but both of these do have an internal DisplayPort connection for feeding from your graphics cards. And ASRock has even gone so far as to offer internal DisplayPort connections on some of their graphics cards. So you can have a purely internal Thunderbolt plus graphics. If you want to do the, like the Thunderbolt, like the, the 5K display from LG, the, you know, the one that's popular on Mac, I guess. Hey, either one of these boards can do it, which is, Really, what a time to be alive. <laughs> the creator, the creator supports faster memory than I have. I couldn't, I couldn't max it out. So it's probably gonna support something like 4200 and beyond. I mean, officially it says it supports 4400, but confirmed working 4000 plus. I think the ideal setup for the gaming ITX Thunderbolt 3 is gonna be something where you're using that Thunderbolt port for IO or possibly an external PCIe device. I mean, you could do external 10 gig if you wanted to. You can daisy chain up to three devices on the single Thunderbolt port that you get on the ITX Thunderbolt 3 motherboard. So I think we have got no choice really here but to do a build. This is the NZXT H210i premium mini ITX case. Yes, this ITX case pushes the boundaries of what ITX should be because it's, it's chonk. But I wanted something that was a bit chunk to power this motherboard. Besides, if you're gonna use a 3950X, you're gonna need cooling. Even a 3900X needs fairly substantial cooling. So I reached out to NZXT and they sent me this case to use with this motherboard for this build because Thunderbolt on AM4. And it's basically ready to go. There's a lot of people on our forum that are really excited about music devices. I don't have any music devices to test but using the uh, external interface, the PCI Express interface, everything was so plug and play on here, I would be real surprised if you have any kind of a problem on AM4 with Thunderbolt. I really hope the next generation of Threadripper motherboards have Thunderbolt support as good as we're seeing on these AM4 boards. It really is, it really is quite good. It's very polished. It's also a little disturbing that you load the Intel drivers right through the, uh, you know, right through the setup on an AMD motherboard, but that's what happens. And one of the reasons that there might be some delay from AIB partners on Thunderbolt 3 is that Thunderbolt 3 is kind of an old standard. It's probably going away. The new standard is going to incorporate a higher signaling rate because I mean USB, well, Thunderbolt is technically 32 gigabit. Some places say 40 gigabit, but the extra, you know, the difference between 32 and 40 is some of like the side channel protocols and you got the USB interface as well as the PCI Express interface and then you got the DisplayPort back channel and if you mix and match some of those things you can't necessarily do one thing with the other and still get the full bandwidth so 32 gigabits of PCI Express bandwidth 40 gigabits total bandwidth really doesn't go as far as it used to I mean it's a PCI Express by four connection so running an eGPU especially if you've got a higher performance eGPU it's gonna bottleneck but for our plucky little ITX system here not a problem so in terms of extras and cool stuff that come with this case, it does come with a fan for the top and a fan for the rear exhaust. There is enough room in the front for a 280 millimeter radiator. Of course, the 240 millimeter radiator is fine as well, or dual 140 or 120 millimeter fans if you wanna run that way. It is gonna run into the bottom here. 
it will work with the standard ATX power supply, but it comes with a bracket for like an SFX power supply. If you want to use a smaller power supply, you totally can, and you'd have a little bit more room to work and move around. There's two hidden two and a half inch bays on the inside of the case, and you've got room to do some other creative things if you really want to, as well as sort of right here at the front for your two and a half inch peripherals. This will fit ITX motherboards. It's got cutouts at the back for a dual slot configuration, but the chunky cards like the uh, the MSI 2070 Super and the 2080 Super will actually fit in here, but there's not really any clearance uh, for the bottom part here. The bottom part does have air holes in it though, so that probably would be able to breathe really well. I did some quickie impromptu testing with it, and the thermals were definitely a little elevated, but I didn't really notice any degradation of performance. I did hear the fans ramp up a bit more in this case than I did otherwise, and that's with a uh, dual 140 millimeter intake in the front with a rad, running a 3600X CPU. So the 3600X is not gonna produce quite as much heat as a 3900X. Keep that in mind, it's anecdotal. You might have to fiddle with things a little bit to do your, your fan. The intake, for this is on the bottom and the and the sides of the front because the front is solid so your fans in the front are gonna really have to do a little bit of work to pull in air from the front for appropriate airflow the only thing i would really complain about is that there's a single type a port on the top and i really think they could have gotten away with the dual type a there is a type c port which is nice i'm not going to complain about having usb type c and then there's an analog headphone connector oh there's also a fan controller the internal fan controller does have a microphone so that it can determine whether or not the fans are, are ramping loudly. So if you would like to control how loud your fans are acoustically, this fan controller gives you the option to do that. Of course, if it came down to the fan controller or the extra USB port, I probably would have taken the extra USB port, but that's just me. Remember, one of the cool features of the Phantom Gaming is that even though it's an AM4 socket, uses the Intel style square mounting. That's so that there's more real estate on the board for Cool stuff. For CPU cooling, I'm using the Massive Overkill H115i. I think if you're getting a 3700X, maybe even a 3800X, the box cooler is fine. It's not gonna be fine on this motherboard because it doesn't have AMD style mounting, but yeah. If I had an NZXT cooler, I would have used the NZXT cooler in the NZXT case. This cooler I got, it was a return, an RMA. I'm gonna hypothesize that this pre-installed thermal paste it's not sufficient for the triple chiplet design on Ryzen. That's just my guess, but I'm probably not wrong. So remind me, you remind me. And uh, we'll do some tests with the, this rad because this rad's pretty bananas. And then if the temperatures aren't good, we'll remove and repaste. I'm gonna have to remove and repaste this thing a couple times anyway, because we're starting with a 3700X, but we're also gonna test the 3900X in here because why not? So my punishment for trying to use the Corsair 280 millimeter in an NZXT case doesn't fit. Well, it does fit, but you have to install it in place. You can't, and it just barely fits. This is the H115i Pro, which is a little, a little chunky on on either end, just like me. So if you look at the cables here in the front, it's a little, it's a little problematic in terms of like the radiator clearing the cables. It's a very very tight fit. And so the Corsair 280 millimeter H115i Pro does fit. You just have to assemble it in place. So you can see where the thermal paste has been mashed down around the circular edges of the cold plate, but the CPU is so concave that the thermal paste maintained its texture on the inside of the ring, which means that the inside of the, the cold plate was not actually making contact with the CPU, which is bad from a thermal standpoint. 2080 Super in the house, and also like one of the biggest 2080s you can get. Well, it doesn't fit. Now, if I give up a little bit more room where my graphics card is, I would be able to use a push-pull configuration on this radiator, which would give me even more cooling headroom. Although, since it's Ryzen, and the Ryzen's not really super overclockable, push-pull's not gonna do much for me beyond the 280 millimeter radiator, which in all honesty is overkill. If you're gonna run a 3600X or 3700X, you do not need a radiator like this. Even, you know, if you're gonna attempt overclocking, I mean, just, you don't need a radiator like this. I'd only recommend this type of radiator for like a 3900X and on up. There are three Phillips screws that retain the uh, cable hider, which I'm going to remove to make our lives a little easier. Maybe. Three screws, one here, one here, one here. And now we can fit our ITX motherboard. 
Wow, in the, uh, because the front panel audio connector is both headphone and microphone, it comes with a little breakout cable that'll give you headphone and microphone. But if you're using a four pin headset, it'll plug right in with the single connector. Isn't that fancy? One thing particularly awesome about this NZXT case is you've got easy access to that M.2 port on the back of the ASRock motherboard. There are some minor quality of life improvements with this motherboard that might make life a little better. One, the front panel audio connector. It's not at a right angle. So depending on your graphics card, it may interfere. It would have been much better if this was a right angle connector instead of a vertical connector. One thing I do like about this MZXT case is that it has tons of options for cable routing. There are actually plastic channels pretty much everywhere at the back of the case and the front of the case and Velcro straps and bread ties that will let you route your cables however you want and really holds them out of the way. Now this motherboard has three fan headers. I could have, I've already got four fans in here, but one of the fans is gonna be connected to the uh, pump. Well, actually two of the fans are gonna be connected to the pump, and then the pump connects to the motherboard. I've also got the fan controller, so I could bypass the fan controller entirely and have both of my fans plugged into the fan controller and then they run at the same speed. So the fact that NZXT includes a fan controller gives you options in case you have a motherboard that's only got one or two extra connectors beyond the CPU connector. Technically, I've got five devices in here, the pump itself and four fans, so. There we go. I've somehow managed to route all of my cables in here and it's actually looking pretty decent. I even managed to get the cable hider back in there, which was really no small feat. I mean, goodness gracious. Jazz hands. Now, I'll have you know that I like my ketchup and mustard cables just fine when they cost $30 on a 550 watt power supply. Yes, it's only 80 plus bronze, but it's fine. It's fine. I think ultimately, keep in mind, there's gonna be a Ryzen 5 3600X in here, so. I'm using the DDR4 3200 G-Skill Rip Jaws. If you get a few bucks to spend, the G-Skill Trident Z Neo, it's gonna be a better choice. It's 3600, it's basically made for third gen Ryzen. This is more than adequate for Thunderbolt testing, and this is two 16 gig sticks. So this is gonna be a 32 gig system, even though I've only got two sticks to work with. Even though this is a dual slot ITX system, you could run up to 64 gigs in this system with two 32 gig NIMS. Would you say that you find this video appealing? And we ended up with the G-Skill Trident Z Neo memory because it runs at 3600, which is great for Ryzen. Pretty happy with how this build turned out. Now there's a little bit of RGB here in the top. There is a little RGB strip controller thing. You can interface that with NZXT. There's a 50-50 strip header here. You can also hook that in. Cut the ASRock board in here. So ASRock Polychrome, of course, works fine with digitally addressable strips. One disturbing thing is that the USB 2 header, so at first I didn't plug that in because I've only got the one USB 2 header. And well, with the Phantom Gaming motherboard, there's not, there's only four USB ports at the back plus Thunderbolt. So I was gonna use this header to give myself some more USB ports, you know, for wireless receiver or whatever. But the fan controller in here wants to also be plugged into USB 2. In fact, it would not power on the fans until it was plugged into a USB 2 header. Now the USB cable, in fairness to NZXT, that USB cable is labeled must connect to motherboard. So if you're gonna use the fan controller, you must connect to motherboard. But if not, yeah, you can just unplug the fans and plug them directly into the motherboard because that's an option. Or use a Y cable or whatever. I've also got the combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port, which is great for people like me that run a Model M. So it's not really the end of the world. It's a really nitpicky thing to complain about. I gotta say I like the power button and the fact that the power button light and the hard drive light are sort of combined. It's, it's sort of a dim light and then it gets brighter whenever there's hard drive activity which works out pretty well. I did end up installing a, uh, an M.2, a two terabyte M.2 in here because why not? Running through a bunch of tests and of course this thing achieved its max boost clock, 4400, no problem. Uh, there is on the level one forum, there's a perfect setup with your you know, ASRock X570 TB ITX uh, motherboard so that you can achieve max boost clocks or at least you'll be most likely to be able to achieve max boost clocks just tweaking a few minor settings in your UEFI. In fact, there's a saved copy of the UEFI. All in all, the NZXT case, this is pretty fun to build in. 
I don't really think that the, uh, the way that the front radiator was in the front, not really a big deal, definitely not a deal breaker. I like the cable routing. I like all the other features and accoutrement with this case. I like what they do for cable management, both you know, for my mustard and ketchup cables here, if I want to mount an SSD to show it off. If I get a 15 terabyte enterprise SAS flash drive to put there, that's, that's an option. I have one of those downstairs, but I don't want to pull it out of a server for a YouTube video, that's just silly. Uh, and then I've also got, you know, cable routing for my, my add-in graphics card, which is currently an RX 580, but we did see that there's enough room in there for up to an RTX 2080 Ti. Now, I know what you're thinking, what about Thunderbolt? Well, you know, all the plug and play tests, all the tests that I could put the Thunderbolt through, everything is working as advertised. Also did the DPC latency checker. The latency checker numbers look pretty good to me, especially for a Ryzen system. If you really need lower latency, you can overclock. This motherboard has some presets in it for like the Trident Z Royal that will overclock the Trident Z Royal memory, which is you know a little pricey, but it'll overclock to 4200, which will claw back some of the latency with the uh, IO die handling, you know, all of your memory interface and the, the, the caveats that come with, with using Ryzen. But generally, I think for audio production, this machine should be pretty solid. If for some reason it's not, or you're using a particular Thunderbolt device that doesn't work, come to the level one forum. I'll try to help you out. Maybe I can remote into your system and take a look and do some troubleshooting. I've done a lot with Thunderbolt over the years, let me tell you. But this is really impressive to see this level of basically trouble-free, painless, Thunderbolt on an AM4, on a non-Intel platform. That's truly impressive. Nice job, ASRock. Well done. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a level one build. Thanks to NZXT for sending me this case. It's a lot of fun. It's really interesting. I'm surprised how good the build turned out. This system might stick around for a while. All right, I'll catch you guys later.